Uh, yeah. uh, I haven't looked at this yet. I can not believe it. Which one? Of, uh, Is it an ongoing or a one shot? Or a mini series? I think it's an ongoing. Or it's going to be one of those. It's a. We say it's an ongoing until it's. We decide it's a mini series. Yeah. <laughs> So I think it's supposed to be a companion series, um, but we'll see. I mean, we should only be so lucky as to have two Black Panther titles going at the same time. Especially because it's not not about like Black Panther; it's about everyone else. Mm -hmm. Oh hey, it's sun sun down run down. It's, the sun has gone down, and we are running them down. Uh, that's right. Now the sun will almost definitively be down every time. Which is we are running them down. Which is funny because when we came up with that title, I think it was daylight savings time. Right. I think. Probably right. <laughs> anyway, I'm Danny. I'm Rob. And uh, despite everything, comics came out this week. It it, the train's gotta be on time. Everything continues. <laughs> also, everything the, dies. The sun, the sun will rise. And then explode. Yes. Well, millions of years in the future. But we were talking about Black Panther, World of Wakanda. That's what we're the hot new about. series. We're, we're both looking forward to it. Imagine I'm doing that thing where I shake it because it's real hot. Like, tss, ah, that caliente. Muy caliente. Muy caliente. This is a series. It's gonna presume it's uh, spin off of Ta Nehisi Coates' uh, Black Panther series. Thank you. And it'll feature a number of different writers and stuff, I think, going forward, right? Is what I remember? Something like that? Yeah. I yeah. think that's right. Because I think as it goes on, it'll be little like the snippets of the Wakandan world. Um, so you yeah. have different writers, different artists. Um, and this will be going until it is no longer going, <laughs> as <laughs> most things do. <laughs> yes, yeah, this. Uh, I think if it weren't for like maybe a story like a month earlier, this is it's written by Roxanne Gay, who's the first black female writer that Marvel's hired. That's right. I do remember reading that, which is super fun. Yeah. So historical thing. If uh, you're following Ta Nehisi Coates Black Panther run, he's like a consultant on this. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's his actual credit. Consultant, consultant not even yeah. co-writer, which is cool. He's just like yeah, just hey, like what she she's doing the things and she's like, what do you think of that? And he's like, yeah. yeah. And like one of the cool things that that the that that run of Black Panther's got going on is that's like there's a whole world in there. Mm -hmm. and it's like it's a super dense comic, so there's a lot to explore. And it's and awesome that they're finally exploring it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, really doubling down on their investment in the Black Panther mythos. Yeah. Is what might say. It's like, one of those worthy, one of the few worthy, hey, we got a movie coming out, let's put out another title of this kind of books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what should I talk about? What should you talk about? I want to talk about uh, a <laughs> bunch of young animal stuff that came out this patrol. week. <laughs> the Dome Patrol. <laughs> this is the... Bizarro Simon Bisley cover. It's, you know, the score. They're like the X-Men, they're like the Fantastic Four, but super weird. It's by Gerard Way and Nick Darrington. Flex Mantello is in it. It's been super weird so far. I love it. Danny the Street has transformed into Danny Land, mm -hmm. which I find delightful, because Danny the Street is one of the great <laughs> comics creations. <laughs> it's a transvestite sentient street. <laughs> Let's never forget. But yeah, this is number three. Read it, please. It's so good. It's so bizarre. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that comics should be aspiring towards. Yeah. Weird and wacky. We, we, we could talk about both of them, right, in a row? Yeah, why not? Bang, um, bang. Also, <laughs> from Young Animal, is uh, Mother Panic, number one. This is by Jody Hauser and Tommy Lee Edwards. I love that name, by the way, Mother Panic. I, I don't know why. I just really... It's pretty very, cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. evocative. So this one is about... So this heiress debutante in Gotham City, who's also a violent vigilante... He's got kind of a transhumanist thing going on, a bit of addiction to technology kind of thing. I mean, who doesn't, right? Kind of, kind of an interesting take on the uh, on the Gotham vigilante <laughs> subgenre of DC Comics. We didn't need another one, but we have one, and it's a really cool idea, so it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, uh, the young animal stuff is can canon? Yeah, it's just like on the fringes of the DC universe. So there's not a lot of crossover there. Gotcha. Like, this is maybe the first that explicitly takes place in the DCU. I like that hat. I know it's called a helmet, but I like that hat. Oh, yeah. Very cool. It's, like, evocative of Batman, but not quite. Not quite, yeah. It's like, you know this person's a vigilante. Look at that hat. But then, go from there. 
I guess I guess the thing is like it takes place in the DC universe, but continuity doesn't really matter. Mm. Like if you're reading Doom Patrol, you know the other Doom Patrol comics have happened and they exist. But right, but it's not like it's only the super immediate. relevant. Yeah. yeah. I saw a church up there by accident with the hat. You thought I was talking about your hat again, right? Oh, yeah. I do really love it. You did compliment my hat when I got here today. That's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> but what else uh, we got? That's what happened to me earlier when you said the thing, you know, the comics in that box. I thought you were talking about the comic I was holding. I was holding, by the way, new WWE comic from Boom. This is the one shot, then now forever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, isn't it the one shot in like, a collection of some other stuff? Like one. Like single pages of stuff? Yeah, there's a whole stories. bunch of short stories. There's a tugboat short, a really cartoony one. It's really cute. It's super adorable, actually. I mean, it is very short, but it's super adorable. Sort of in the style of like an old, old like Mickey Mouse cartoon. New Day has a... New Day story drawn one. by Choose Rob Gilbert. Oh, that's who that dude is. Rob Gilbert, excuse me. Yeah, that so, looks like a lot of fun, but it's it's uh, there's going to be an ongoing series yeah. after this. Yeah, so this is just the one shot that they're doing an ongoing. But to what I was saying is, you said there's you know, the that comic is in that box, and my very first thought was, does he mean that this WWE comic is in a box somewhere, like like a pull box? <laughs> so I just said yes instinctively and then tried to find my way back from there. <laughs> ah, it's confusion abounds in this new world. Oh, it's my turn, huh? I think Bray Wyatt would feed on that confusion. Bray Wyatt shows up in this WWE comic. It's great. I love Bray Wyatt. It's a, it's a good comic. Really cool art. This Dan is Mora, many, yeah. Dan Mora on art. Dennis Hopeless writing. Dennis Hopeless of All New X-Men and She-Hulk. Not She-Hulk. Spider-Woman. Where did I get She-Hulk? I guess they're kind of friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he also did uh, Avengers Arena? Yeah, uh, he did do Avengers Arena. Academy? No. He did, he did Avengers Arena, which is like the sequel to Avengers Academy, where they all get killed up. Wasn't there one after that? Like Avengers Undercover. Underground? Oh. Yeah. It's that close. Oh, that close. I think it was called Avengers Undercover. But I know you're, you're right. <laughs> the, cool, the cool thing about the WWE comic, though, is that it's all in continuity. No BS. This is just like a comic book about wrestlers doing stuff. This is for real wrestlers' lives. Yep. Um, the other day I finished uh, Luke Cage. It's pretty good. It ends pretty well. I still have it. In my opinion, it's, parts of it are rocky, but overall, good aesthetic, yeah. some nice fighting, good soundtrack, great actors, do dope ending. And uh, Power Man and Iron Fist is, I know his name isn't Luke Cage on the cover, but this is Luke Cage, Iron Fist. This is the Harlem Burns story arc, starting in number 10. So, it's David Walker, it's Sanford Green, great it's artist. It's uh, kind of a number one. So you can jump in even if you haven't been reading it, but obviously you should have been reading it. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool book. You can jump in on number ten, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just jump, just, just, just do it. Treat yourself. It's, it's jump a good in read. whatever you want. It is a good read. Don't let anybody tell you how to read your comics all of your life. <laughs> even us. <laughs> if you want to go back and buy number one through number nine, do that too. That's all right. What do we know? We're just two guys <laughs> running them down while the sun is already down. <laughs> uh, what's next? What is next? What's next is a comic that's that's um. Got a bit of buzz around it for yep. a variety of reasons. Been at the center of some controversy for various reasons. Invincible Iron Man. Uh, people have been excited because it features Riri Williams becoming yep. one of two new Iron people. Iron Folk. <laughs> I like Folk. Um, this one, she becomes Iron Heart. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some controversy about a variant cover, but... There's also some controversy about um, featuring Brent. more... Uh, characters of color, but not creators of color. Yeah, which is also a problem. Which is uh, very much the problem. But um, if I am in a position to say, despite that, this comic has worth, then despite that, <laughs> this comic was pretty good. Like, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I've said frequently before, I think Brian Michael Bendis is at his best when he's creating new characters, as opposed to writing characters that already exist. Yep, because you don't have like a an image of them in your mind already. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, that's not how Iron Man talks. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, I think this will be cool. I like the art a lot. It's Stefano? Stefano yeah. Caselli. Stefano Caselli. Great artist. I really, 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 really love this art. What, what, what Was Caselli on some of the Uncanny X-Men? I think so. Because... A, uh, we were talking about a, a Bendis character that appeared in All New X-Men appears in this. Yeah. And... 
Or no, Uncanny, rather. I said all new earlier, but I meant Uncanny. Oh, okay. Forgive me, friend. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and uh, she looks very similar to the way she was drawn before, so I imagine. Either way, it's cool. Riri Williams is a cool addition to the Marvel Universe, even for people who think the character isn't for them. Yep. Um, from Image Comics, we haven't talked about Image yet <laughs> tonight. We haven't talked about Image in a while, it feels like. I say, because everything feels like it's been a while. Yep. Like Stain would say. It's been a while. Did you know that guy is a country music singer now? I did know that. I didn't know that nuts? actually. It is nuts. <laughs> that was a fun thing to find out. <laughs> it's very silly, but uh, <laughs> Violent Love, number one from Image Comics. It's uh, Frank Barbier and Victor Santos. Sort of a romantic crime comic in your, uh, maybe your vein of like a Badlands, Natural Born Killers kind of thing. Very nice art. Very My cool colors. My coworker course. said it looks a little bit like Darwin Cook art kind of. Oh, a little cookish. But I would be willing to say almost like a combination of like a Jeff Lemire style with a Darwin Cook. Oh yeah, like thing. maybe a, what's my man's name, Matt Kent? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sort of a hybrid of Matt Kent and Darwin Cook. R.I.P. Thug Angel. Very cool. Very cool. I like it. Now we got a new one from Boom again. That's, oh my god, I didn't even realize I grabbed two Booms and two Marbles. What a, what a funny thing that happened just there. It's called Namasaki. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Namasaki from the very American writer Steve Romanto. <laughs> and the artist Jacob Rebelka. That's about right. Um, I really dig the art in this book. From what I know about it, uh, I remember reading this solicitation and being very interested, but in all fairness, I think I've mentioned before that I like Steve Orlando. He was doing the whole Night of the Monster thing. He did that Virgil book, I think, for Image. Yep. Of being a gay cop in uh, Jamaica. Um, he did uh, Undertow. Yep. Um, he did Midnighter. Midnighter. He's doing Midnighter right now. Um, he's got that upcoming JLA run that we're excited for. That's right, that's right. It's he's, be good. he's a guy who's who's it's quickly coming to like. He's on the come up. And yeah, and I'm <laughs> really thoroughly enjoying the things he does. So I saw this. And I was like, it's cool. Something to do with two worlds connected by some sort of like portal things, and you can only travel between these worlds for like seven days or something like that, I think. And so he's got to bring uh, these urns. Oh, I should get closer. You can't see these are urns. I thought those were cool. Is that urns. what those are? Yeah, those are urns. Pretty cool. Urns back to the one world. They look like giant uh, like sinkers, I think you call them. Like fishing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> I imagine. One could use them as such, if need be. So yeah, comics about space fishermen. That would totally make a comic about space fishermen, right. by the way. I'm ready for it. I never thought about it. I'm in. I'm doing it. Um, this is a great week for comics that I love. Because Casanova is back with new number seven. This is uh, Matt Fraction, Fabio Moon, Gabriel Bott, and Michael Chabon. All-star lineup. All-star lineup. It's, it's great. It's my fave. You should all read it. You should buy the trades. I am still borrowing your trades. That's right. I still have them. You should read them. I should read them. Take some time this week. I think I will. Got anything else? Uh, I'm all, I'm tapped, man. I ran them down. Did you see Doctor Strange yet? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? I had my problems with the film, <laughs> but on the whole, I did not regret going to see it. I thought it did some very cool things with visuals and such. Yeah, definitely. Um. I think, in my personal opinion, it would have been better had two things been different. One, the romantic subplot did not exist at all. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it wasn't, that didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, it didn't really add anything to it, like, um, and also, if maybe, I get it, you know, I get Marvel has a very, as a system that works. You, you take serious characters, you take serious material, you inject a little bit of humor, you got a nice little balance going. You go back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. I thought this movie... It was just a little too funny. Some jokes, yeah. And I was like, I could do it like 25% less jokes. <laughs> like, after after Age of Ultron, which I like with some reservations. Ditto. Um, no Marvel movie will ever have as as many jokes as that does. So it's you, never too much, because that's like the top. <laughs> you know what, that's fair. Because I watched Age of Ultron recently, and I was like, man, I like... That movie needs a 75% reduction in jokes. Because <laughs> they're like, not even good jokes, it's just like no, bad clips. You yes. have to ask. Uh, shut up, Cap. <laughs> like, it's like no one in that film can shut up at any point. No, everyone feels obliged to speak at some point. 
to. You don't have to. Like, I promise you, you will still superhero just fine if you don't talk at all. So, you know what? That's fair. By comparison, Doctor Strange is not nearly as egregious as that. But there's just a couple, like, like weird slapstick kind of things that I didn't mm -hmm. really appreciate. Um, also, the fact that despite, like, magic, all we really got to see were, like, circles and uh, um, that one filter <laughs> where you make things, uh, like, um, kaleidoscope. <laughs> could, have, could have been more to be done, but the fact that there was more than just the Inception building kaleidoscope thing was pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Did you see it in IMAX 3D? I did not see it in IMAX 3 It's kind of worth it. Yeah, really? I, you, you, know got what, the cash. you know what? I could actually imagine that being a film that would be very... Because some of the, like, otherworldy kind of stuff was very delightful to watch. I can only imagine what it would be like really immersed in it. Yeah. We went to see it. We went to see the preview at a Disney California Adventure. They have like the three D, like take fifty minutes, watch some scenes from the movie, and we're we're pretty much sold. Like, like all that like flying between buildings and stuff is so amazing. Oh, yeah. With like a giant screen and three D glasses. See, now I gotta say that I don't like three D stuff. I, I, I normally don't, but this one they actually actually felt like there was some care. Worth the uh, worth yeah. the effort. Right, like sure. an hour of the movie was shot in IMAX. Could be worth it. There's something else I was going to say, but no, I forgot. Something about, uh, something, 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 something. Uh, I literally, I, it's gone, it's gone forever. Sorry. Either way, I, um, yeah, like I said, did not regret. Oh, 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 I thought I had the Thor problem, the first Thor, where, um, we're told that Thor slash Doctor Strange is the worst, and, like, he doesn't come across as great on screen but also he's not like the worst yeah they could have been more dislikable yeah like Thor I, I had the biggest problem with Thor because Thor is like fighting frost giants and we know frost giants are bad <laughs> like we as the audience know that those guys are not reputable folks we get Thor has his legacy being a prince of blah, blah 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 but you really can't blame him for hitting a frost giant they're mean they eat people they destroy stuff whatever mm -hmm. and then he gets back and his dad's like bad 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 sends down to earth and Thor's like, howling it up with mortals, <laughs> drinking beers, like, mm -hmm. being real sad when Loki says his dad died. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then we're supposed to believe throughout all of this that this, like, generally likable guy is not worthy. Or at the very least was worth banishing from his kingdom. <laughs> it's, it's going to be great when Doctor Strange shows up in, like, one of the Avengers movies and he gets to be a jerk to everyone. Oh, for sure. Almost I did think Benedict Cumberbatch, though... Excellent job. Big Benny come, man. As... He's... We, we doubted him. Big... That thing that you said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did doubt him, but I, I it was weird. Like, I kind of forgot that he was Benedict Cumberbatch while I was watching it. Like, he did not have that usual Benedict Cumberbatch, like, vibe. Mm -hmm. He's good. He's a good actor. Yeah, he's a good actor. Mordo, was great. I like that guy a lot. It's a lot of a lot of good complexity, mm -hmm. like more than you'd expect. In terms of like character motivations, I'm definitely um, excited to see what they do with the next one. Yep. I think that's. Um, I think we're done. That's all I have to say. Yeah. So, come by and buy some comics. Yeah. Preferably the ones we suggested because those are our favorites. It would be somewhat disconcerting if after watching this you came in to buy comics but then didn't buy any of these comics. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. Oh, what's your video? Um, I'll get Hal Jordan and Green Lantern Corps. Like, what? What? That's it. How? I, I had talked about, about it. <laughs> How are you gonna know if it's good or not? I don't know. You just inspired me to buy comics. Not those comics. I guess that's nice. At least we accomplished something. Yeah, exactly. All right. See you next week. I think. Probably. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Who can know? Who can know?